Hello everyone, it's now the 5th of March and it is still 2019 and it is day 19 of GHV Air Film Savers. Hooray! And the reason we are so far away from the camera this uh, afternoon is uh, Julian's going to take on continuing with the air ambulance that we began not that long ago. He's got all of the instructions here and he's got the paint. So I'm going to get out of the way and watch Julian get on with that. He's going to be giving the instructions to you, but I'm going to be listening to them because I'm going to be doing my air ambulance next. And we'll, I'm going to try and do a bit of zooming ha -ha, and a bit of time lapse photography. We'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Julian. Give me a minute to get behind the camera and then take it away. Now, so that's behind the camera, yep. we can begin. Now, if you remember in the last episode, we did the priming of the sprues where we used a light grey primer. In this case, it's a Humbrol primer. Uh, I have bought some uh, primer, which is car primer. Uh, that does have, issue a lot um, more pungent smell than the Humbrol one does. Humbrol is a bit more expensive, but I'm using that because I'm uh, modeling in the kitchen at the moment even though I've got an extractor it's still best to keep the, the fumes down if you can but that's been done uh, so the first element we actually need to start constructing uh, and just about all instructions for all model aircraft plastic model aircraft start with a cockpit first now we're doing the East Anglia Air Ambulance uh, which may be a slightly different interior colours to the standard uh, aircraft of this particular type but I've had a look online and I can't see any real difference at the moment. Most of the interior colours are, according to Revel, various shades of grey. Uh, they give their, because it's, the model is actually made by Revel Germany, the various shout outs for the colours are on, I think, page three at the bottom there. You won't be able to see that, but they're A, B, C, D, E and F. But underneath it, they also give the, uh, the actual name of the colour and a number, which uh, equates to the particular colours they do in their Aquacolor acrylics range, which I've got in front of me. Uh, so, A, uh, let's have a look, see which is which now. Uh, number 371, for example, uh, which is D, is light grey or hellbrow, uh, which is this one, all the way up to black Schwartz, which is this one, which is 08. Now, before you do any painting on the model, you really need to get yourself set up to paint. Um, one of the most important things to have, first of all, is immediately to access, which I thought I had access, which I haven't got. Oh, yes, it is up here, I put it on the top here. It is some uh, paper towel uh, for the inevitable time where you knock something over, knock over one of the walls or spill things all over the place. You'll need that to mop up or just, just to help clean the, the paintbrushes. Obviously, you need paintbrushes. I've got some by up the top here, which you probably won't be able to see. Pan, pan around easily. Uh, which is one of the best places to hold it. Easy to get hold of. Uh, there's some of the finer brushes, so I don't keep those in the water. And a few down by the side of me here, which are slightly older ones. You also need a, uh, I use a, a mussels jar full of uh, fresh water just to wash the brushes off in between uh, coats of paint. And I also make sure from, from uh, uh, hard won experience to keep your water for washing your brushes on the opposite side of the desk to your tea or coffee. Because several times in the past I have accidentally washed my brushes in the tea or coffee and once I took a swig from, from my uh, washing jar, which is not a very good thing to do. It, doesn't, it's not, it creates a non-toxic, but it doesn't taste very nice all the same. So, get started on this. So the very first thing you need to do is to have a look at the instructions and see. Now it, uh, it instructs you to start with a, with a base of the cockpit, the cockpit floor and the two seats of the pilot and co-pilot. So locating the base of the cockpit floor is quite easy. It's actually on this particular sprue. It's a, a long overloid part. And the seats are on the other sprue, two individual seats on there. Uh, so what we'll do first of all is to paint the actual uh, base of the cockpit floor. Uh, if you look at the instructions, it's got E on there as the, as the required one there. And E on here is Mat 57, which is standard grey. Now I've got some of that in here. Now this particular one has been used quite a lot, so it may not be uh, soft enough to be able to use. I might have to use another one there, but I'll use, just dip a brush into some of the water and just, oh it is, it's actually smooth enough to use. So I'll just dip it in there. 
Now the reason I'm brushing these now as opposed to actually using the airbrush which I've got or rattle cans, lots of modelers do prefer to use it that way. I like painting uh, by hand. Not that I'm particularly brilliant at it, but it, I think it, it's more skillful to do it this way and it's certainly more relaxing. It might be slower, um, but oh, actually I don't know whether it's slower or not. There's a lot of faffing around with an airbrush. You've got to clean out the actual uh, uh, little bowl where the, where, the color, where the paint goes into. You've got to mix it. You've got to drop uh, sometimes uh, uh, little bits of uh, retardant in it to stop acrylic paints drying too quickly. So it can be a bit of a problem. Uh, and I think at this scale, if I'm doing a large area, then I will use an airbrush or, or a, uh, a paint can. But doing things, small things like this, painting is quite adequate for it. Now just start on by doing just small strokes of the, of the brush and make sure it's thin enough. If it's not too thin enough, it's going to be a bit thick, then you can just put a little bit more water on the brush. Some people use palettes, I tend not to, but if you just carry on just small strokes, little thin strokes over the whole whole of the area, I do the top surface first of all. You might need two or three coats of this. Not particularly that important on the interior. As I said, again, you won't be able to see too much through the actual glazing. But I like to, in my mind, I like the fact that I've done a decent job of the interior because even if you can't see it, I know it's there. So we just get this painting up there. This might be a little bit boring, but I know Sally's going to do the uh, uh, the time lapse, so you'll see me racing through this like anything. Okay, so you've done the cockpit and now you're moving into the seats. Well, it's all still part of the cockpit. It's all, it's all part of the cockpit. Oh, I beg your pardon, yes, right. Yeah. So you. Seats, seats and everything else is all part of the right, cockpit. Right, let's, let's have a look at this one here that you've completed. Yeah. What is that? That's the cockpit floor. Oh, that's the cockpit floor. Yeah, it's the back, back end is there, the front end is there. That's the part of the console where the instruments go, the little holes there are where the various controls go, the cyclic and, and the collective in this particular case, and the, and the actual control stick itself. Okay, and what are you painting now? I'm painting now the seats. Now you might just be able to see, which I don't like very much, they've actually moulded on cross seat belts because the, the modern way to produce models is to have them with the aircraft sitting on the ground with nobody in it, but I like pilots in mine. Mm. Now they haven't supplied pilots with this, but I have got a few spare pilots somewhere else in the building which I will find before I put the whole thing together. So I like, I, 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 my, my opinion of aircraft are symbiotic creatures. It's a combination of the machine and the man, right. or the woman, for the pilot. So uh, I always like to have a, have a people in, inside the aircraft, but, which is quite difficult. And I've got a little campaign going on various forums, the various model manufacturers to get back to supplying pilot figures with the aircraft. Because mm. I really don't like not having a pilot figure. Now, one of the things I heard you say, which wouldn't have come across in the time lapse, is that you try not to paint the edges of, uh, for example, the floor. Um, yes. And why was that? Well, if you paint the edge right to the very edge, obviously paint it right to the very edge, but I often try not to get too much paint on the very edge of it because some of these are where you're going to glue it into the actual fuselage. Right. And um, paint is that the styrene paint we use is better for melding plastic to plastic as opposed to paint on plastic to, to paint on plastic. So if you can keep some of it clear, it doesn't matter that much because a lot of the, the paint actually does melt through the paint as well, a lot of the, sorry, the, the glue melts to the paint as well. But mm. uh, if you keep a little bit of it clear of the of the, uh, the paint, it doesn't matter that much, it actually does help. Okay. So I'm just painting now the seats again and again. I'm just quick, this is the first brush, it'd probably be two coats on this particular one. I'll just give it a first brush over. And as I say, I don't think all these seats are needed, but I like to give them at least all they at least a first coat of paint, just in case that we might decide to put some in. If we find any better images of the East End, the air ambulance showing it's got a different setup to the setup that's provided for in the box. So that's the big bench seat at the back. I think don't think the bench seat in the back is used because they take that out to put the mm. stretchers in, but I will paint it all the same. And also you said that sometimes these paints dry out, that they dry out relatively quickly and just a bit of water. They do, yeah. A bit of, uh, well, w water keeps them, uh, thins them down, but there, there's a product uh, which really you use more in airbrushing than actually in uh, hand painting, but you could use it with hand painting as well. It's called retardant, uh, which slows down the, the, the drying of acrylic paints. Enamel paints, 
which are the original type of plastic model of paints back in the 60s and 70s you might have got used to, uh, don't have that problem because they are oil based and they take a lot longer to dry, which is good in some ways because they, they probably go on more evenly, um, taking longer to dry, they sort of flow out better. Um, but the, the bad side of it is they are toxic and they smell the place out as well. Mm -hmm. So modern modelers tend to go, I mean, modern, modern suppliers tend to supply um, acrylics more than enamels. And also I think our post office, particularly in the United Kingdom, has got a thing about non, not sending a potential flammable items in the post. And, and uh, again, enamel paints are often flammable. Let me ask you another question now then. Um, you've elected to do the floor and the and the seats first. Is yes. that because they're the first in the diagram? So you are following I am at the moment I'm following the diagram, but obviously to put the put the parts together. Now some models do actually attach the seats onto the floor before painting it, but I, I prefer to do it before doing that because sometimes you never quite know how you're going to be able to get at it once sure. it once it's been attached. Now you can always touch it up afterwards, but uh, I I'm sort of doing it here in the standard way for viewers benefit and for some of his benefit who's going to be doing it after me uh, well, a lot of the time yes. once particularly if it's a second time i've made a version of that particular model i often find some quick get arounds for it and I, and I might veer away from the instructions and do things in a different way that i think is slightly better uh, but if, for this particular instance i am sticking fairly rigidly to the the instructions as i haven't built this particular aircraft before that's probably just as good for me as it is for, for the viewers and, and for Sally. Cool. I like the fact that you use the lid as the palette. Yes. I think that's really efficient. Well, that's, I think that's what, what they've been for. Uh, but, um, and so what are you painting now? What I'm doing now is uh, uh, the actual original colour for this is uh, the one I've got, the Revel one, the actual colour is actually so it is left and it's dried up completely and I can't resurrect it even with thinners. So I'm using an alternative from the Humbrol range. So right. I'm painting one of the in, inner walls of the um, of the of the cockpit, uh, to which I think is a a stretcher um, attachment point is attached, and there, there will be a seat on there as well. Oh. So. Okay, no camera. Okay. And I think it's the same on the other side there. So I'm doing that one as well. I think this will need a couple of coats of paint because this is a a glossier paint. It requires a gloss on here, so that gloss tends to need more covers of paint than matte. Thank you, Doki. All right. So we need there on that one. Okay. Well, from my point of view, that was really interesting, and it was also uh, a real trip down memory lane because I do remember doing these as a kid with my brother, and it just brought it all back. It was just really fun. And I learned some good things as well. So just share with us what you have done now. Uh, well, what I've done now is I have painted most of the interior parts for the cockpit. Uh, I normally give these two coats, at least two coats, for the uh, uh, matte colours and probably three or even four coats for the gloss colours because they take a bit more to cover. So we won't do that under time lapse. I'll do that in between now and show you the next stage of this. So we painted the seats, the instrument panel, the cockpit floor, the cockpit sides and all of the controls, including the, uh, the, the rudder pedals and the, uh, uh, the cyclics on there. We weren't able to find a collective. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to collectively hunt on, on screen to see if we yes. can find the collective for this helicopter. Because it's not going to get airborne without one. No, and it doesn't even seem to show them in the instructions. No, really, no. no. So, uh, so, may, but you won't be able to see it once it's all yeah. put together, but it's nice to think it's there. If, it's not, if, if they haven't provided the, the collectives here, what I might do is actually fabricate some a little bit of plastic tube and put them in anyway. Yeah. If we can find a decent cockpit picture for, for the uh, air ambulance. Yeah, that too. Which we're about to go and have a look for. Yeah, okay. So I hope you enjoyed our uh, contribution for today. Thanks for watching. Thank you.